I carried to my lips a spoonful of the tea in which I had let soften a piece of madder. But at the very instant when the mouthful of tea, mixed with cake crumbs, touched my palate, I quivered, attentive to the extraordinary thing that was happening in me. A delicious pleasure had invaded me, isolated me, without my having any notion as to its cause. It had immediately made the vicissitudes of life unimportant to me, its disasters innocuous, its brevity illusory, acting in the same way that love acts, by filling me with a precious essence, or rather, this essence was not in me, it was me. I had ceased to feel I was mediocre, contingent, mortal. Where could it have come to me from, this powerful joy? I sensed that it was connected to the taste of the tea and the cake, but that it went infinitely far beyond it could not be of the same nature. Where did it come from? What did it mean? How could I grasp it? I drink a second mouthful, in which I find nothing more than in the first, a third that gives me a little less than the second. It is time for me to stop. The virtue of the drink seems to be dimension. It is clear that the truth I am seeking is not in the drink, but in me. The drink has awoken it in me, but does not know that truth, and cannot do more than repeat indefinitely with less and less force, this same testimony which I do not know how to interpret, and which I want at least to be able to ask of it again, and find again, intact, available to me, soon, for a decisive clarification. I put down the cup and turn to my mind. It is up to my mind to find the truth, but how? What grave uncertainty, whenever the mind feels overtaken by itself, when it, the seeker, is also the obscure country where it must seek, and where all its baggage will be nothing to it. Seek, not only that, create. It is face to face with something that does not yet exist, and that only it can accomplish, then bring into its life. And I begin asking myself again, what it could be, this unknown state which brought with it no logical proof, but only the evidence of its felicity, its reality, and in whose presence the other states of consciousness faded away. I want to try to make it reappear. I go back in my thoughts to the moment when I took the first spoonful of tea. I find the same state without any new clarity. I ask my mind to make another effort to bring back once more the sensation that is slipping away, and so that nothing may break the thrust with which it will try to grasp it again, I remove every obstacle, every foreign idea. I protect my ears and my attention from the noises in the next room, but feeling my mind grow tired without succeeding, I now force it to accept the very distraction I was denying it, to think of something else, to recuperate before a supreme attempt. Then, for a second time, I create an empty space before it. I confront it again with the still recent taste of that first mouthful, and I feel something quiver in me, shift, try to rise, something that seems to have been unanchored at a great depth. I do not know what it is, but it comes up slowly. I feel the resistance and I hear the murmur of the distances traversed.